Hello and welcome to Gold Squad Online. My name is Emily and I'm the Creative Wellbeing Admin Assistant at Derby Quad. Gold Squad is a relaxed, friendly group for anyone over 50 who is interested in creativity, learning new skills and trying new challenges in a supportive environment and working with other people. Sessions are led by creative practitioners and visiting artists. Today, Philippa Larkham is going to show us how to applique using sheer fabrics. As Philippa mentions in this video, Gold Squad are currently working on a series of samples to make into a fabric book. The previous sample was a Korean patchwork flat fell seam, which is available to watch in our Gold Squad playlist on our YouTube page or in the description box below. For today's session, you will need some sheer fabrics including cotton organdy, a template of flowers or trees that you'd like to use, thread, needle, scissors, a raisable pen or pencil and pins. Let's get started. Hello, uh, this week we're looking at continuing to make the fabric um, for books that we started last week with the Korean patchwork um, folders and covers to them. So this week we're going to concentrate on um, doing some applique, uh, but we're going to use um, sheer fabrics. So this is one of the things that's in your pack. You might not have this colour. Um, and I've also got some of the cotton organdy and I've created some little templates here I've traced and these are the trunks of my um, of my trees and then these are going to be the the tops of my trees uh, the, the foliage so it's going to have a, a quality like this to it so the first thing to do is to take um, some form of um, er erasable marker if you've got it if not just very very fine um, pencil line will do and I can because the organdy is so nice and uh, transparent you can actually trace your trunk through that or whatever it is that you're tracing so it can be leaves it could be shapes it can be um, any any design that you um, like something that perhaps you see on, on a walk every day um, it's entirely up to you um, I, I see a lot of the trees and I'm just noticing they're coming out in the bud in bud at the moment so that's been really nice. Um, so this is going to be the, the canopy if you like of my the tree that I've just tree trunk that I've just drawn. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've made another pattern from that and I've pinned it onto the uh, dive organdy and I'm just going to cut it out. So I'm just cutting round the template. It doesn't matter if you're not totally accurate with it. Um, it's just just as a suggestion really. It just gives it a little bit of structure. And this organdy is from Steph Francis who uh, dyes fabric. I'm just trimming it round and okay. It's sort of sorted, just make sure it's not got too many little pieces on it that are a bit 
jagged, so you can get as smooth a cut as you can. Um, and this is a silk, um, so it's rather lovely. And then once I've cut that out, I'm going to take the pattern off and I'm going to now lay that onto the little shape that I've got here. Okay, and then I'm going to repin that. Um, I'm using some Merchant and Mills fine pins. Um, if you've got lace pins or bridal pins, sometimes they're called, that would be really nice. I'm just going to pin that in place. And if you just have a little look at the one that I've already started to work on, what I've done is I've used a chain stitch to actually create the outline of the of the trunk. So I've worked over the green so that you've got a really nice um, kind of outline to it. Um, and I'm using some silk threads, but you can use ordinary um, sewing cottons or stranded threads, um, so whatever you've got um, to hand. And I'm now going to start to work on this one so that I start to fill in the gaps. And I've, I've changed the colour slightly of the thread that I'm using, so I've now got a bit of variegated. It's also got like a little bit of purple in it, which is rather nice. So I'm just going to keep now working the chain stitch in to fill in the area. Okay, so that's what would be really nice to to carry on doing um, on, on your piece. Um, it might be not chain stitch, you might want to do it so that it's more obvious. So you could do little running stitches or back stitches or straight stitches that you then couch down, um, have a play with, with how that works for you. Um, and then the, the next part would be then to start working actually onto the, the tree itself. And I'm going to suggest that you perhaps play with the idea of um, some French knots, um, which would be quite nice to, to do. Um, or you could use a colonial knot, which some of you will have done with me before. They're both possible to see on the um, dmc.com website. There, there's some really interesting um, ways of working on those um, patterns, designs. So if you go into the stitch directory, there's some good diagrams to follow. Um, and so I'm just going to create a not on the back. It doesn't matter what's happening on the back. In a sense, we're almost applauding the back as much as we are the front. Um, and so with this one, you could also, if you wanted to, just use um, little seed stitches, so little straight stitches that are going in lots of different directions you know, to give it um, some texture. So pull that through a little bit more. There we go. Or like I say, you could use um, French knots if you wanted to. So all we're doing now is using this as a method to anchor the piece. Just realised my threads just sheared a little bit. Just sort that out. So these are things that happen and it's fine. I'm just going to just re-thread my needle. Um, in terms of the needle sizes that you use, um, an embroidery needle is really good for this. Um, but you can also use a slightly bigger needle, so with an eye to it that's bigger to uh, thread. This one is a chenille 22, which you use quite a lot. And you see I'm just working over. You could draw those on underneath if you want to, um, or just take it on a nice little journey and what's quite nice with using these shears is you you get um, a sort of a shadowing occurring behind um, the actual pieces so where the line of the thread is going to get to the next stitch so there we go um, so just fill in your little tree use chain stitch as I say here or straight stitch 
all, uh, lots of running stitches all joined up together. Um, and the idea is to apply, if you like, applique, um, uh, some a different colour shape onto your onto your piece. Um, and I've also had a little play. I'm still working on it with doing some circles in different colours and letting them overlay on each other. And I'm just working a little Pekingese stitch around that yellow zone at the moment. Um, and then on the back, I've I've just done some little bits of seed stitching, which hopefully you'll be able to see. And, they are, and then I've just frayed the silk organza back to where they are. And I'll carry on doing some more work on that as well, but you can build it up um, as you as you see fit. So the other thing to remember is to have a you know, nice peaceful time sitting and stitching and, and in, a, in a way, let your imagination um, take you somewhere and expand your thoughts and um, the, the, the pieces will evolve. Okay. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the session. Please send any creations to creativewellbeing at derbyquad.co.uk. For more information on Gold Squad, please visit www.darbyquad.co.uk and search Gold Squad.